Let us now consider the second part of the above statement which relates to cell also being termed as basic functional unit in living organisms. We will continue to explain this with the same example of human body and its functions. We know that our body can perform variety of movements. When we perform any movement like picking up an object, sitting down or getting up or simply turning our body or body parts sideways or moving from one place to another, we are using variety of muscles in our body to bring about all these movements. All movements are possible because of ability of these muscles to undergo controlled contraction and relaxation. These muscles are a type of tissue made up of elongated slender cells termed as muscle fibers. Muscle fiber cells or simply muscle fibers in their cytoplasm contain large amount, very thin long filaments of contractile proteins. Due to the presence of these proteinaceous filaments, each muscle fiber can undergo contraction and relaxation. When signal is received from the brain, the protein filaments in the cytoplasm of all muscle fibers that are bundled together to form a muscle are pulled closer to each other thereby decreasing their length. Simultaneously, all muscle fibers and hence the muscle itself undergoes contraction making movement possible. So, in this case, the function that the living organism performs is movement of body parts. The body tissue that performs this function is muscle tissue present in that body part. The muscle fibers are the cells that make up muscle tissue. Contraction of protein filaments in muscle fibers causes contraction of the muscle. In summary, protein filaments in large amount inside cytoplasm of each muscle fiber gives thousands of muscle fibers bundled together to form a muscle gives two or more muscles in a body part responsible for motion of the body. Thus, muscle fibers are the structural and functional units that enable the humans with ability to move. Let us discuss one more example in human system. We know that the food we consume undergoes the process of digestion and absorption in our digestive system. The food chewed by the mouth enters the stomach via oesophagus where it undergoes chemical digestion. It means that complex nutrients like proteins and carbohydrates are digested into simpler nutrients that are easily absorbed in our body. The stomach produces mixture of chemicals and enzymes termed as gastric juice which aids in the process chemical digestion. This gastric juice is produced and secreted into the stomach by the gastric glands present in the wall of the stomach. The glands are made up of epithelial tissues and the granular epithelial cells produce the components of gastric juice. Thus, it is right to conclude that the epithelial cells that are part of the stomach lining contribute to the function of digestion. Similarly, the simple nutritive molecules like glucose, amino acids, vitamins, fatty acids which are obtained from digestion of food are absorbed in the small intestine. The innermost layer of the wall of small intestine is also made up of epithelial tissue in form of microvilli. It is this microvilli which are involved in absorption of nutrients. In above examples, we have discussed how various bodily functions of movement, digestion and absorption are actually performed at cellular level in human body. In a similar manner, we can explain that all the functions of living organisms like obtaining nutrition and energy, growth, response to environment, repair and maintenance of body, reproduction etc. are performed at cellular level. This is true in case of all other organisms, no matter how complex or simple is their body structure and organization. Hence, it is appropriate to term cell as basic or fundamental functional unit of living organisms. Finally, dear students, we now summarize the points covered in this session. 1. Explanation for cell as fundamental structural unit of life organisms. Two. Explanation for cell as fundamental functional unit of life organisms. 
in case you still have doubts regarding the answers to above concepts please go through this session again can you find answers to the following questions one which were the first cells observed under the microscope two what unit are used to measure the size of the cells three which instrument is used to observe and study cell organelles i am sure you will easily find answers to these questions when you read the chapter from your textbook in next session we will discuss types of cells and microorganisms